It seems like just yesterday that I was reviewing Babby Goes Nuts and the idiotic message it was trying to spread. It's also been quite a long time since I did any companion pieces, so I think I'll do one today. One show I revisited recently is The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Fresh Prince needs no introduction. If you were a kid in the 90s or spent your evenings watching Nick at night, you're familiar with this show and likely have very positive memories of it. Not only was Will Smith's character likable, but so was the rest of the cast. And that's not even getting into the importance of it being a sitcom that follows an affluent black family. Now, what Fresh Prince is often remembered for these days is the comedy. And to be frank, it's nothing short of comedic gold. However, a lot of people don't recognize how much heart it actually has. We all know the episode, Papa's Got a Brand New Excuse, which explores the topic of absent parents. That's not the episode we're going over. Nah, instead, I'm examining Bullets Over Bel Air, which talks about being the victim of a violent crime. This episode starts with Will walking in on Ashley watching cartoons with Nikki. Nikki starts asking a bunch of questions, while Ashley remarks that he's just at that age of burning curiosity. At first, this scene felt pointless to me, but it actually does come back later. You'll see what I mean. The next day, we see Will and Carlton preparing for a camping trip. Uncle Phil co then comes down to show them a map he made. Now I've charted our trails. We're gonna hike in just below Limestone Falls, then we're gonna raft down the Rocky Point, and we're gonna spend our last night at Two Arches. Uh, the marches better not be golden. <laughs> Don't worry. On this trip, it's just us and the elements. <laughs> We're going to be roughing it like frontiersmen. <laughs> oh, incidentally, sir, the limousine will be here to pick you up at dawn. <laughs> I'd make a joke, but I'm definitely the same way. Will laments on how Carlton is overpacking and then accidentally opens the raft they were going to take. Since the raft broke Carlton's lamp, they go to the ATM so Will can reimburse him. However, on their way back home, Will and Carlton get mugged at gunpoint. Let's have the money! Come on! Come on! All right, hey, hey, hey it's cool, dude. Uh, Carlton, give him the money. Hey, look, that, that's all we got, man. That's it. I got some more, my Take your hands out of your pockets! Take your hands out of your pockets! You know, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure you will, but this might have been the first time a sitcom has shown someone getting shot. Of course, you don't get to see the actual carnage, but it helps build up tension since you don't know which of them took the bullet. Great directing there. At the hospital, it's revealed that Will was the one who got shot, and the family's in all in a panic. I just want to make sure he's going to be comfortable. We're doing everything we can for him. Well, those white sheets can get so dingy. Don't you have any nice pastels? <laughs> That's not our major concern at this point. Excuse me. Well, what about television? He's not going to just have basic cable, is he? Well, at least Hillary has her priorities in order. Phil returns and says that Will is in stable condition and that the bullet was safely removed. The, the family all visit Will and he is all in good spirits, probably due to the sedatives he's clearly on. He tells a bunch of jokes and they all laugh along, just glad that he's doing okay. Carlton, however, is not so amused. He's absolutely ridden with guilt over the fact that Will took a bullet for him. When he steps outside, Phil tries to go talk to him. Son, where are you going? I don't know. I'm going for a walk. Carlton, it's after midnight. I don't need something to happen to you two. Well, there's nothing you can do about it. These things just happen, right? <sighs> Carlton, I know you're upset. You've been through a very traumatic experience. Now, if you just calm down, we can talk about this rationally. You're always in control, aren't you? Always know what to do, always know what to say. Well, you know what gets me? The police aren't even going to find this guy. And even if they do, so what? He'll be out on the streets in six months. It's not going to happen. Come on, Dad. It's happening to people you've put away. Well, the legal system isn't perfect. Go talk to Will about our legal system. It's such a joke. People aren't even afraid of it. Carlton, look, I'm frustrated too. But as a judge, I have to have faith in it. No matter how much I might want to go out and knock some heads. Eventually, the system will come through. I'm all grown up, Dad. Don't tell me any more fairy tales. Personally, this is why having Will take the bullet instead of Carlton was a good move. If Carlton got shot, he would have just been even more of a wimp. But instead, he watched his cousin nearly die, and now realizes that he has to toughen up because he, the supposed protectors he's told to rely on won't be there for him. Moreover, Phil, who usually has the answers he needs, doesn't have any worthwhile insight this time around. All he has is what he's used to, which isn't enough for Carlton anymore. 
The family leaves, but Will's girlfriend Lisa stays with him overnight. Her presence here is important. Not only is she able to see that his humor is just to ease the pain, but she's there to wake him up when he's having a night terror about the shooting. The, the following morning, during breakfast, Carlton visits Will by himself. He's still feeling guilty about everything, and even goes as far as to say he owes him his life. After he lets out some anger, Will asks him for a hug. When he goes for one, Will notices something heavy in Carlton's jacket packet. Carlton reveals that he bought a gun. Carlton, are you out of your mind, man? You walking around carrying a gun? What do you think you're gonna do with that? It's for protection. Carlton, Car well, man, what do you, do you think it's that easy to just shoot somebody? I close my eyes. So what, you don't think I'm mad? Huh? I'm laying up in this hospital an inch away from being paralyzed? You don't think I want to get up out this bed and go catch it? It was not gonna happen again, not to me! Carlton, Carlton, I understand that you're scared, man. But the world can be a scary place. You just gotta learn how to deal with it, all right? Yeah, well, I found my way. That's not you, man. That's them. This is important. They actually have all their bases covered here. The reality in protecting yourself is that violence is never easy. Even just punching someone is a nerve-wracking experience. Rather than saying something stupid like kicking someone in the dick is for girls or that shooting a mugger isn't fighting fair, they bring up the fact that Carlton is an innocent kid and that he certainly doesn't have the chaps to shoot another person, even if it's deserved. Furthermore, Carlton is not portrayed as the bad guy. He's just angry and doesn't want to be in this frightening situation again. To be a little more personal here, I do possess a jackknife for, for protection, thanks to a close call I had some odd years ago. Thankfully, I've never had to use it, but even I question if I'm big enough to do so at times. I guess what I'm trying to say is, don't rush to violence. It's important to learn to fight, but learn to intimidate first. Will demands Carlton give him the gun. When he does, Will checks to see if it's loaded, only for bullets to fall out. Will breaks down, realizing that Carlton actually was intending to shoot someone. And that was Bullets Over Bel Air. With all that said, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, despite the powerful moments here, the episode does struggle with some structural issues. Mostly with how it feels like they were trying to pad out the runtime. The beginning's a little slow, there's a fair amount of dead air, and the second half goes by just a bit too quickly. But hey, a C is still a passing grade. I love Will and Carlton's respective performances. Will acts like you'd think he'd act in this situation, and Carlton does the same. They also know how to balance drama with comedy, as neither one overpowers the other here. I definitely recommend revisiting this show, because chances are you'll be pleasantly surprised by what you get. Thanks for watching, this is the Nihilistic Snake slithering out of here. Yeah. <laughs>